Bonjour and welcome to this new video of Paris Top Tips. Wait, haven't we already seen this? It undeniably feels like déjà vu, since it's a video I shared back in May last year. But before you hit that skip button, hold up, there's something completely new here. The Louvre has decided to play the sequel game too, and they've cranked up the drama by increasing their entry prices by a jaw-dropping 30%. Yes, you heard me right, 30%. It's the art robbery of the century, but instead of stealing paintings, they're swiping your euros. So if you're a Louvre pro or just feeling a bit broke, feel free to skip ahead. But if you're here to relieve the magic of last year's video, or if you recently hit the jackpot and want to flounder extra cash, stick around. This is the same show with a touch of inflation and a sprinkle of Mona Lisa's pricey smile. Play it again, Sam. Bonjour and welcome to this new video of Paris Top Tips, your YouTube go-to resource for all things Paris, dedicated to helping you make the most of your visit to the City of Light. As you know, from practical tips and hotel reviews to insightful sightseeing advices, I'm here to ensure that your trip to Paris is nothing short of extraordinary. In today's video, we're diving into one of the city's crown jewels, the world-renowned Louvre Museum. Join me as I share my insights, my practical tips, and a curated list of the top 10 must-see masterpieces of the Louvre. But that's not all. I have a special treat in store for you. I'll be providing you with a strategic plan that will allow you to experience these extraordinary artworks with the most efficient path, maximizing your time and ensuring an unforgettable visit. So get ready to unlock the secrets of the Louvre and discover the wonders that await you in this captivating museum. Let's dive in. If you're planning a visit to the Louvre, it's important to plan ahead and prioritize which works of art you want to see. With over 35,000 art pieces, it's impossible to see everything in one visit. So take the time to research and decide which works of art you want to see the most. Create a plan to make the most of your time at the museum. Or follow the path I'm showing you in the second part of this video, which will have you see the main must in just two hours. Tip number two is to purchase your ticket in advance. Here, the line was minimal on a weekday in winter. But getting your tickets early will not only save you time waiting in long lines in summer, but also ensure that you get the entry time and date you want. Purchase your tickets at the official Louvre ticketing service. You'll find the link to it in this video description below. Here, for example, I'm purchasing four tickets for the 25th of January at 10 o'clock in the morning. As I mentioned it in my introduction, the price for 2024 has increased by nearly 30% from 17 euro to 22 euro. Merci le Louvre. Fortunately, for children under 18, but also for young residents of the European Union under 25, it's free. The pyramid entrance, located at the main courtyard, is the most iconic and visually striking entrance. It provides direct access to the museum's central atrium and serves as a popular choice for many visitors, but it can often have very, very long lines. Consider using the Porte des Lions or Carousel entrances as alternatives to avoid the crowds. The Carousel entrance provides an access to the main atrium from the Carousel du Louvre underground shopping mall. It can be used if you already have a ticket, which should be the case if you follow tip number two. The Porte de Lyon is my favorite entrance. Located on the western side of the Louvre, it offers a quieter 
and less crowded alternative. It provides access to the Denon Wing, allowing visitors to explore the most interesting part of Le Louvre without the hustle and bustle of the main entrance. The Port de Lyon is closed every Friday though. If the ticket office there is closed, the entrance is then reserved for visitors who already have a ticket. The museum tends to be busiest in the afternoons and on weekends, so if you can visit in the morning on a weekday, you'll have a better chance of avoiding the crowds. It opens from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day except Tuesdays. The museum is also open until 9.45 p.m. on Fridays, so you may consider visiting on Friday evenings. Tip number five is to take a map at the information counter. These maps are available in various languages and will help you navigate through the museum with ease. You can also download the map on your smartphone. Wear comfortable shoes. Sneakers would be the best. With over 72,000 square meters of exhibition space, you'll be doing a lot of walking during your visit. The Louvre can be overwhelming, so don't forget to take a break and rest your feet. The museum offers a fine dining restaurant, Bistro Benoit, an Angelina Tea Room, a Starbucks, a Paul Bakery, and my personal favorite, Café Molien, with a stunning view on the pyramid. Taking a break for a meal or a cup of coffee can be a great way to recharge and relax during your visit. The Louvre's audio guide is available in several languages and will provide you with valuable information about all the artworks on display. The free Louvre Wi-Fi is available in all the exhibition rooms, also offered free of charge Take the opportunity to borrow canes, push chairs, baby carriers. Yeah, you can visit the Louvre with a baby and wheelchairs. The reception staff under the pyramid will lend them to you in exchange for a piece of ID. A comfortable solution for families, people with reduced mobility and the elderly. Before showing you the 10th and last tip, I suggest you come with me and discover the 10 most beautiful works of art in the Louvre. To start this visit, Let's enter the Louvre through the Porte des Lyons and, if possible, as soon as the museum opens to have as few people as possible in front of the first masterpiece that we are going to see. on level zero, so we'll take the stairs up to level one. There's also an elevator if needed. At this unique level, by taking the route drawn in yellow here, we will discover six of our 10 must-see masterpieces and many other equally impressive works. The first room, 718, allows you to admire Spanish paintings from the 17th century. Then we find Italian paintings from the same century, which bring us to the Grande Galerie, 
the largest room in the Louvre Museum, entirely devoted to Italian paintings from the Renaissance. Now take your time, admire the paintings, until you reach room 711. There she is, Mona Lisa. Expect to queue if you want to see her up close. In the meantime, turn around and here is our first top 10. The Wedding Feast at Cana by Veronese. Now let's queue for Miss Lisa. It might take some time. One last look at the wedding feast at Cana, and let's go back to the Grande Galerie and walk towards its eastern end. On the way, more beautiful paintings, including my personal favorite, La Belle Ferronnière by Leonardo da Vinci. Before we leave the Grande Galerie, one last look at what is perhaps the largest art gallery in the world. Now, let's go and see our third must-see. The Wing Victory of Summer Trace in room 703. Before continuing our quest for the 10 must-see masterpieces, let's take a short detour to the superb Galerie d'Apollon, which houses the crown jewels of France. Now let's go back to the winged victory of Summer Trace, take the stairs facing it, down, then back up and enter room 702. This large red room, as well as the next one, are full of masterpieces of French painting. But the centerpiece of the room, which is one of our 10 must-see masterpieces, is The Coronation of Napoleon by Jacques-Louis David. Let us cross room 701 without failing to admire its magnificent ceiling and enter room 700, even more filled with masterpieces, if that is possible. Raft of the Medusa by Jericho is the first of the two must-see masterpieces in this room. And the second one, by Eugène Delacroix, is Liberty Leading the People.
I'll take the monumental staircase at the back of the room and enter the sculpture department on the floor below. Here is the first of our top 10 masterpieces, which is not a painting. Psyche revived by the Kiss of Love by Antonio Canova. Now let's go from the Denon wing to the Sully wing where we will see our next must-see masterpiece in room 345. Here is the victory of Summer Trace again. However, we will not go up but down this time. Department of the Greek Antiquities. Here she is, the most famous work of art in the Louvre after Mona Lisa. This is the Venus de Milo. It's just a short work through the Greek antiquities to our next musty masterpiece. Our ninth must-see masterpiece is Egyptian. It's the Great Sphinx of Tanis, whose date may be as early as the 26th century before Christ. To reach our last must-see, you will have to work quite a bit. First at the level of the medieval Louvre, then going up to level zero through the rooms of Middle Eastern antiquities in the Richelieu wing. The Code of Hammurabi is our tenth and last mercy masterpiece for today. It is a Babylonian legal text composed in 1750 BC. It is the longest, best organized and best preserved legal text from the ancient Near East. It has been written in Old Babylonian dialect by Hammurabi, sixth king of the first dynasty of Babylon. The primary copy of the text is inscribed on a basalt steel 2.25 meter tall.
With the vast array of artworks and treasures housed within the Louvre, it's virtually impossible to experience everything in just one visit. Therefore, a valuable tip is to plan for a return visit and take your time to savor the masterpieces you encounter and leave room for exploration on future trips. So soak in the beauty and inspiration during your first visit and let the anticipation of your return be a constant reminder of the wonders that await you at the Louvre. And that's it for our 10 tips and top 10 must-see works of art at the Louvre. I hope these tips and directions help you make the most of your visit to this amazing museum. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more practical videos helping you prepare your visit to Paris.